I, I want to thank each and every one of you who from across America have made it possible for the basic health care needs of the American people to be recognized. You're the ones who have made it possible for the American people to understand that health care is a basic right. You're the voice of that. You're the face of that. You're the, the action. Here's what I would like to humbly and respectfully recommend that the month of August uh, be about. Uh, first of all, to the brother from Pennsylvania, every single pair effort that's out there right now at the state level needs to be redoubled. We need to show people that the only real way to control costs and to make health care widely available and have your doctor of choice is through a single payer system. There's just no question about it. It's not even disputable. We need to re-empower all those statewide movements. And we need to start ones where they do not yet exist. The second step is, in September, when this bill is brought forward, one of the amendments to H.R. 3200 in labor education, I was proud to offer, and it was passed, and that is an amendment that confirms that states will have the option to have single payer. Now, we need to protect that amendment. And, and the activities that need to occur in communication with congressional offices between now and that vote in September will be to protect the Kucinich Amendment to H.R. 3200 that was in the Labor and Education Bill that provides for a state single-payer option. I'm just going to give you a little bit of the technical background in case anybody asks any questions. The uh, ERISA Act, uh, which is the Employer Retirement Income Security Act, uh, was written so that states would basically have a uniformity in their employer-related health care programs. As of late, ERISA is being used to try to defeat single-payer initiatives. So what I did, recognizing that, what I did was to draft an amendment which would give states, which bring forward a single-payer plan, an automatic waiver from the ERISA <laughs> law. Because we have to anticipate that the insurance companies, which, are, which have a death grip on our political process right now, the insurance companies which are fighting for not just their lives, they're fighting for, for our lives, <laughs> that they are not going to relent until they have a total victory with the government creating a mandate and forcing people to buy more private insurance. What a deal. <coughs> Hello. Um, but we understand that. So I need your help, and we need to work on it in the next month, make this a national issue, preserving the Kucinich Amendment to, the, to H.R. 3200. Okay, the third step. You know, first we, we, we make that sure that single-payer movement becomes healthy at the state level. We empower it and, and, and protect it through the amendment to 3200. The third step is we should not, we need to re-double our efforts towards a single-payer movement nationally, everywhere, as a national construct, no matter what happens with this bill. This bill could eventually fall of its own weight. There are so many compromises being made. People are compromising they're compromises which were already compromised. <laughs> this is so compromised, the bill. And after a while, people meet themselves. They meet their shadow running around a corner. This, there's confusion, but there's also the possibility the thing could go down. We have to be ready with the only solution that exists. And that is 676, the bill that John Conyers and I worked on together, that is the single-payer solution. So we, we need to be ready with that. And that's part of a national movement. Go to the people who are telling you, I don't have insurance, or I can't afford my insurance, or the co-pays and deductibles are driving me crazy, or I'm going broke, or I'm losing my home. We have to, we have to be... We, we have to be the emissaries of, of truth here and, and, and for the health of our, of our people. Now, there's one final thing I want to mention. And this moment, we should not lose sight of the importance of this next point. 
and that is if we ever had a moment where we had any doubts about the imperative of, of public financing for federal political campaigns, th this is the moment where we're re awakened about that again. Years from now, assuming our efforts will be successful, people will look back at this era and say, what was going on in America? Everything was for sale and the people's rights were, were being destroyed and, and the, every vote seemed like it was for sale. I mean, the money that's pouring into this capital, it's, it, it's just becoming commonplace that people take large campaign donations from these various uh, medical interests and then, and then state the very positions of the interests that they took the money from. And it seems like, well, that's, that's the new normal here. Well, new rule. <laughs> Public financing. So now, what does that mean? Those of you who are involved in the state single payer initiatives, we are going to, at some point, need to merge public financing uh, into the health care movement, health care for all, single payer. Because when we do that, actually the two go together. Because unle unless we're able to break the hold that these insurance companies have through their campaign donations, we're always going to be where we're at. And that is stuck. Now, when you consider that the mass of the American people actually support our position, when you consider the mass of the American people really do want a government they can call their own, that this isn't a Democrat or Republican issue, a left-right issue. Uh, this is about an up-and-down issue, you know, whether, whether people will be able to be lifted up economically or whether they're going to be destroyed. So you're part of something that's so important right now. You as activists from around the country really do have the opportunity to transform our nation and transform our politics. It's not about any one individual. It certainly is about me. It's about all of us who are making an effort here, that our efforts matter. They matter deeply. So we have a lot of work to do in the next month to six weeks before Congress starts to crank this up again. You'll know what needs to be done. You already know. You've already been doing it. But we're at the center of American politics today with what we aspire to. But when we moving from aspiration to reality, it's a huge effort. But the tides of history are moving in our favor. The tides of the economy are moving in our favor. The desires of the American people for a health care system they can call their own truly moving in our favor. We just have to be strong of heart, determined, courageous, ready to challenge this system, ready to change this system, ready to make sure this system, this government, responds to the will of the people. Thank you very much.